Good day, everybody. How's it going today? Well, today we're going to talk about a little bit of a serious topic. It sort of alludes to the last topic we kind of talked about. It fits in in its own strange way. In our last video, we discussed um, the 2023 numbers um, for furry conventions. They're ones that are growing, ones that are sort of pulling back a little bit, changes in venues, changes in time periods in which they're launched. All this different change and activity going on in the furry fandom. And it's very important to realize that it all starts somewhere. All these, all these videos about conventions and holding gatherings with each other, all these come together, um, all these things coalesce from a starting point. Somebody had to start the first convention. And unfortunately for the furry fandom, some more sadder news has started to come on, on our wake. Um, one of the founders of, of this furry fandom and one of the you know people who led one of those first furry confine the founding of one of those first furry conventions um, has recently had news come out in regards to his health. Um, Ash Coyote has been in good contact with um, them, him during this time and um, Basically, she came forward and said that uh, Mark here was uh, put into the uh, put into the hospital due to a stroke that happened over the holiday um, season. And as the doctors investigated more, it is unfortunate, but Mark is being put into a um, is is being recommended hospice care as he has been found to have stage four liver cancer. So. Similar to how one of our other founders, Fred Patton, um, he had issues with health for a long time um, in his older years. Um, it looks like we have another furry uh, founder here who is unfortunately <clears throat> going to be spending the rest of his days probably within hospital care. It's a tough news, obviously, for a lot of people. Um, Alex Coyote did an interview with Mark um, for her documentary um, on the furry fandom, um, as that's how she has a good contact with him. And this is exactly why I'm very grateful and happy that our fandom is large enough where, you know, we have the ability to communicate with each other and she has access to this sort of information, right? And that she's the one that can present it. Um, a lot of times people in the furry fandom or and, and people in nonfiction in general say it was like oh i want to be the sole arbiter of what the furry is or what the fandom is and it's like you miss out on a lot of connections and capacities to do this um when you kind of look at yourself as a sole arbiter or try to bring it as a, as a sole thing and i think that's a lot of things that a lot of people in nonfiction um, get wrong so I'm, I'm very grateful that ash um, was able to announce the, um, this difficult news and i'm glad that and i hope uh, you know, I'm grateful that she's there to, um, you know, speak on their behest here, um, you know, and, and, and help them through this time and and also help us help them through this time. Um, there is a link to a um, GoFundMe page, um, and that is um, I'll have a link in the description below. Um, Furry Phantom has come really good together and basically has already raised um you know, high 48,000-ish, like almost 50,000 for him um, to deal with medical expenses and issues. Um, so if you can't donate, if you don't have the capacity to, I would say, you know, the fur rest of the furry fandom seems to have really been generous and really have helped um, Mark in these troubling times. Um, so... Like there, there is, and, and sort of on the on the idea about community, there there is the essence that we talked about this a little bit in another video about a more infamous furry called Garrow Shadow Scale, um, and in that video we kind of discussed how stifling Garrow was being to his community, and my critique on that was how if you're too stifling to a community, you don't allow organic growth, you don't allow connections to be made um, without your presence, right? Because Garrow is like, well, I'm not going to allow anybody in my community um, to hang out with each other unless I'm present for it. 
and when I'm present, then I'm going to be the center of attention kind of a thing. And you can see, like, while you you might not get as much catharsis in the immediate sense if you're not trying to make yourself the center of attention, if you want to see a good example on how, even if you're not involved directly in somebody's life, that you can have a great positive impact is if you read the comment section on the GoFundMe and you read the comments on, you know, how this random furry was at their, um, at their, at their home at, for a random furry meet. Um, and that was at the Prancing Skeletaire. Um, many people are familiar with the Prancing Skeletaire out in the West. It was a, uh, place where, you know, that Mark and his husband would hold parties and meets, um, to, for, you know, and, and was probably one of the original furry meets um, in general. Um, and it always had been sort of a, a small little gathering and get together. That small little gathering became larger and larger over time. And that is when uh, Mark basically uh, created, helped create one of the uh, first uh, furry conventions. Um, and Conference Zero was uh, done on for two days in January in 1989 um, and basically conference grew over time um, its first its first initial meet by the way uh, it, of the conference only had less than a hundred attendees and the the growth of the fandom has really shown over time when when I was going to my first like I, I went to some premier conventions um, I went to you know furthermore's premier convention and it was already almost to a thousand so it's a it's almost kind of strange that you know back in those days this convention was the size of like a just a large meat in most cases but that foundation was necessary even if that foundation had a little rocky um had a little bit of a rocky um growth and eventually ended up um, closing its doors, you know, due to that rocky growth, um, you know, but people involved in conference were involved, were absolutely took lessons from that particular venue and applied them to other arenas. Uh, Kage's Anthrocon, right? That one was basically a derivation of, um, you know, from that conference and Kage did get experience um, from conference. So the it's very much is a it is very much a thing where all of these numbers that I talk about on this channel, a lot of these community uh, gatherings that we discuss, these things that we almost take for granted in essence, um, would not be in the state that they are today without the people who put themselves out there first. And so a lot of furries are, you know, showing very, very much respect um, for this person and who and who he was and what he has done for the fandom. Um, and if you want to show your respect, then please, like, if you can donate, donate. If you can't, um, you know, show your support in other ways through kind words or through, you know, art or your or written letters or anything that you can possibly. Um, you know, come forth and, and help. But um, if you're in dire straits, I'm sure that he would rather you not throw money at it. I'm sure he would be like, if you have to choose between going to a furry convention and seeing your friends and throwing him money for his medical bills, I'm sure he's the kind of person who'd be like, man, I may, <laughs> I developed these furry conventions. Like, go ahead and like enjoy your time with your friends because life is too short. Um, he is that kind of selfless person and good you know he's the kind of selfless person because he would talk about this history to the people who were curious like ash coyote and joe strike um the author of a furry nation but you know he's not going out of his way to you know he's not doing a garrow shadow scale kind of a thing he's letting he lets his community he he shows the community the way right he, he does the thing that a lot of people are too intimidated or said couldn't be done and he shows that it can be done and others follow in those footsteps um, that's what a good forebearer does 
Um, and it's unfortunate that the forebears of our fandom are, you know, getting up there in age and that age, you know, will take them from us. But I'm glad that we live in a peaceful world where, you know, time and maybe maybe that bastard cancer decides someday to take us, but you know, we're not being harmed by our fellow citizens, right? And if we and that's a, that's another um, it's, it's uh, as much as furries get concerned about that kind of world, it's great to see that, um, you know, a person lives a full life and, you know, creates, a, 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 you know, does their part and leaves the next part for the next generation. And it's uh, going to be tough over the next several years for sure as, you know, the people that you and then this will happen to you one day too if you're a younger person um you know you you don't think it'll happen to you but time time has a way of coming for you know dealing with us all in time and so enjoy your time that you have and use the time that you have um to lay better foundations for um yourself the people you care for and even for strangers because while not a lot of people might have known Mark in person. A lot of people, in the, every, uh, mostly everybody in the furry fandom, has has been impacted by you know his task and his his efforts um, during this time of his life. So, thank you very much, Mark, and I hope that um, I hope that some by some miracle you're able to beat this thing. Um, and I'm sure that a lot of furries feel the same. So, thank you everybody for watching today. Uh, I'm not gonna have the, you know, the, leave good comments in the comment section. I'll be a little probably more vigilant about silly comments in this particular one because it's a bit more somber. So, have a good one, guys. We'll see you guys next time.